Welcome back to the class on electrical cylindrical pole synchronous machine. The machine is symmetrical about the main field action. So we are considering the armature reaction as a single reaction that is the constant value. But when you come to the silent pole synchronous mission, the air gap is not uniform. At the pole area, the air gap will be low. Intrapole area, air gap will be more. So due to that, there is a non-uniform air gap flux will be there. In this case, we should not take the armature react drop as a single quantity that is a constant. The mission is symmetrical about the d x and q x that's why we have taken two x. Now we are going to define what is the d x and q x is, how we are going to consider the armature reaction. In this case, we have considered the two pole mission. This is the stator, this is the rotor, and the rotor we kept the two poles. This is the d x. D x is nothing but that is the axis which is passing through the main field is nothing but d x. Q axis is nothing but a, the axis which is perpendicular to the d axis is nothing but a, q axis. The angle between the d axis and q axis is the 90 degrees. The machine is symmetrical about the d axis as well as the q axis. That's why here we consider the 2 axis. Whenever you are given the DC support to the field by name, the MMF will be creating from the field that is in case with a main field axis. This is main field axis. That we denote with a Effort. So, whenever we give the mechanical input rotor, there is a rate of change of flux linkage with the stator conductor, the voltage will be induced in a stator that is excitation voltage. The angle between the main MMF and the excitation voltage is 90 degrees. All the trials are rotating in an anti clockwise direction with a velocity of moment. So, that's why here we have taken the EF. This length is nothing but EF. If we connect a resist to load across the stator of a synchronous generator, the current is increased with a IF. So, armature MMF also lies only on the Q axis. Armature flux also will be lies on the Q axis. Armature MMF and flux is perpendicular to the main field MMF and if we apply the resist to load. Suppose, if we apply the inductive load across the stator winding, the armature current lacks the EF by 90 degrees. So, IA will be coming here. So, F E also coming on the D axis. Armature flux also will be coming on the D axis. That is quite opposite to the main MMF. So, the resultant MMF and resultant flux will be decreased. Suppose if you apply the pure capacitor load, current leaves the EF. Nothing but the armature current is coming on the D axis in this direction at this point. Armature MMF and armature flux will be same as the main field MMF and main field flux. So, net flux will be Increase. Suppose if you apply the RL law, the angle between the armature current and excitation voltage is psi that we have taken here. Now we are going to resolve this armature current into the two components. One is the, the component of the armature current which is increased with here, nothing but Q axis current. The armature of the component which is in phase with a D axis, nothing but a D axis current ID. The phasor sum of these two is nothing but a IA. So when the armature current is passing through the Stator winding, armature MMF will be created, that is FA. Again, it is also can be divided into the two components, one is the FAQ, nothing but the component of the armature MMF in, in the direction of Q axis. FAD, armature MMF in the direction of the T axis. When these two MMFs are created in armature, because of the armature current, the armature flux also will be created. So, in this direction, the armature MMF is nothing but FAD divided by the so, the reluctance of the flux in this path will be lesser. So, this flux will be more. But in this case, FQ by reluctance of the magnetic flux in this direction, that is more. So, the flux in Q axis will be less. That we represented here. Phi AD, Phi A. So, in this direction, more amount of flux, armature flux is there. In this direction, Q axis is the less amount of flux. Because of these fluxes, there is a voltage will be induced in a chatter winding. That voltage is nothing but a armature reaction voltage. Already we know that the angle between the voltage in use and flux is the 90 degrees lag. So, because of this flux, whatever the armature voltage is in use, that is lags by phi AD. That we are representing as a minus J I D X A D. Where X A D is nothing but a armature reaction reaction in the direct action. Because of this flux, phi A Q there is a voltage will be induced in a stator winding due to the armature reaction. That we are writing as a J I Q H. X A Q is nothing but a armature reaction reactance in the Q 
एक्स दिस कॉम्पाउंड इन रखूं बटे वोल्टेज कॉम्पाउंड नाउ बिकॉज ऑफ दिस वोल्टेज इन इंड्यूस इन डी एक्सिस दिस इज द वोल्टेज इंड्यूस इन एक्सिस ड्यू टू द आर में चल रही सो व्हाट एवर द सप्लाई वी आर गिविंग टू द स्टेटर वाइनिंग इट हैज टू कॉम्पेंसेट द आर में चल रिस्टेंस प्रो Armature leakage reactions drop and armature reactions also. But if we come to the armature react reaction drop, there are two compounds. Other one is D axis compound, another one is a Q axis. Now finally, we are writing that the voltage equation for the silent force introduction mission from the two reaction theory. Excitation voltage equal to terminal voltage plus I A R A plus J I A X L leakage reactions drop J I D X A D. Nothing but the voltage drop in a Q axis. This is the voltage drop in a D axis. Voltage equation in a case of a silent force introduction. We know that the armature current also we divide into the two components. One is the D axis component, Q axis component. So we can write the I A equal to I Q plus I D. In place of I A, now we are going to substitute the I D plus I Q, and we are simplifying that. So finally, we are getting the Excitation voltage equal to V plus I D plus I Q R A plus J X L plus X C A D into I D plus J X L plus X A Q into I. X L is nothing but a leak. Surface leakage reactions of the scatter wind. X C A D is nothing but a armature reaction in a D axis. X A Q is nothing but a armature reaction in a Q axis. Now this we can write it as a direct axis synchronous reactions. X P equal to X L plus X C A D. Nothing but quadrature axis synchronous reactions equal to XL plus XAQ. So in this place we have taken the XP. In this place we have taken the XQ. So final voltage equation becomes so. excitation voltage equal to V plus IA RA plus J ID XD plus J IQ. Now we are going to develop the phasor diagram of the silent pole synchronous mission with a lagging power. Again we have taken the voltage equation of the silent pole synchronous. EF equal to V plus I R E plus J I D X T plus J I Q X T. So first we have taken the x axis and y axis. Next we have taken the voltage phasor. Next we have taken the armature current. That we have divided into the two components. One is D axis component, another one is Q axis. Q axis component is nothing but the component which is in phase with the EF. D axis component is nothing but the component of current which is perpendicular to the Now, for this voltage, we are at the I A R A drop. This is I A. I A R A drop is always parallel to the I A. That you have to draw from the tip of the V. That is I A R A. Next, J I D X T. This is perpendicular to the I D. So this is I D perpendicular to this one. You have to draw from the tip of the I A R A. We are getting the J I D X. Next, J I Q X P. J I Q X P is perpendicular to the I Q. From the tip of the this vector I D X X P, I have to draw one vector from the tip and up to the E. Because the phasor sum of these four quantities gives the excitation voltage E. The angle between the voltage scatter current we defined as a phi. The angle between the excitation voltage and armature current. We have taken the psi. The angle between the excitation voltage and the thermal voltage we have taken as theta. Now we are going to develop the phasor diagram of the silent pole rotor with a leading power. Again we have taken the same voltage. Again we have taken the x-axis and y-axis. Voltage we have taken here. All phases are rotated in anti-clockwise direction. So this is the current phase I A. Next on the x-axis we have taken E F. The length of E F in case of leading power vector we try to take less than the V. Now you have to resolve the armature current into two components. One is I D, another one is I Q. So for the V, you have to add I A R A drop parallel to the I A. This is I A R A drop. Now J I D X D is perpendicular to the I D. So perpendicular to the I D, you have to draw a one more vector from the tip of the I A R A. That is J I D X D. Again from the tip of this vector, you have to draw the I Q X Q up to the E F. That is the J I Q X. The sum of these four components is nothing but excitation voltage. This is the phasor diagram of the synchronous generator with a silent pole rotor. When we connect a leading load across the scatter of a synchronous. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly, or you can ask me in the comment box. 
YouTube channel so that I am always welcome to answer all your questions.